Lord. So our message this morning, we'll eventually get to it, will be out of uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 20. But the, the title of our message this morning is Joy to the World, Our Lord Has Come. And as I was sitting, um, being blessed by worship this morning, it just seems like, maybe it's just me, but the high points of um, maybe the life of the church, maybe those within the church, maybe um, at times we celebrate uh, Christmas, uh, Easter, and to some extent Thanksgiving. I mean, those just seem to be the boom moments, the you know asterisk moments throughout the year, and and it was seemed to me that in in refocusing, re redialing in uh, the things that should be important to us, is every day should be Christmas. Every day should be Easter. Every day should be Thanksgiving. And, and in that, there are those distinct you know, days and those moments when we celebrate. But the joy of the Lord should always be our strength. We should always reflect upon his death and resurrection. We should always reflect upon his birth and life lived amongst us. We should always reflect on uh, thanksgiving, being thanksgiving for, or being thankful for the things that, that he has done. And so in our message this morning, you know, we'll receive differently this message. All of us will. Same words, same scriptures, but we'll receive it differently dependent upon what we're going through in life right now. And so I pray that um, the scriptures would bless you. The things that we would do would uh, draw you closer, and in all of it, um, I pray that God gets the glory. So the first uh, question that I have, and this isn't assuming anything because I don't know. Oh man, knows another man's salvation. Have you received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ? And and that would be the the foremost of what. I pray this message would bring. Have you been reconciled to God through the death and the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ? Because that's the greatest gift of all. There's nothing greater than the gift of eternal life. I'm going to do a memorial tomorrow. And the memorial that I'm going to do is for someone who nobody knows nothing about. Nothing. Not sure of the date of birth, sure of the date of death. Not sure of where they grew up, how they grew up, who they knew, what they knew, anything. But, but the focus is upon the fact that this person came to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. See, and, and, and that's the important thing that we have to focus on is not what you've done, what has he done. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. It's not who you embrace, it's who embraces you. And, and hopefully that's the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. And are we living our life, are we living our life in light of that? Read now 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Uh, we're told about loving God knowing God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Ever reflect upon the fact that you're his child, you're his kid, you're his beloved? You ever reflect upon that? Because there are many, there are many who are of the world and in the world who don't have that relationship. Yet we have that relationship because God so loved us before we loved him. Isn't that amazing? How, how blessed are we to be among those 
who can say he loves us and we love him and we will be with him forever. I mean, you can't just let stuff like that evaporate out of your being. That has to be in the forefront of your being. Reading out of Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's that's our our. Oh, oh Mr. Mike, I'm sorry. Oh, did that scare you? Yes. Everybody's awake now. We're awake now. Hello. Man, I'm so grateful I had my NASCAR diapers on. That was that was. And that'll be on tape forever, right? So I'm, I'm all good with that. I'm all good with that. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the message this morning is titled, Joy to the World, Our Lord Has Come. Do you have peace with God the Father through the gift of the Son, Jesus Christ? And if you do, Give him thanks, and if you know those who don't, bring them the gospel. Bring them the gospel. And if you can't verbally bring them the gospel, then you best be living out the gospel in front of them. So that they might know, they might wonder, they might ask, why is that person different from all the rest of the people? So verbally, or, or living life, Discipline. Are you one of those folks that uh, are in an intellectual relationship with the Lord? There's nothing wrong with being a Berean. There's nothing wrong with having a storehouse of biblical knowledge up here. But there are so many in the church who acquire knowledge because in their acquiring, they think that that is what finds them favor with God. Well, I know this, 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 and this. But do you have a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Well, I must. I know so much about him. I mean, I make you look like an infant in what you know compared to me. I, I have to have that understanding. And there's many that believe that their intellectual prowess will cause them to find favor with God apart from that relationship. Are you someone who has received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And you keep him in that gift box? You, you have received him? You've put him in this box of, wow, this is awesome. And then every once in a while you open the lid and look in and go, yeah, I still got that. That's all good. But what have you done with the gift that God has given you, the gift of the Son, Jesus Christ? And, and that's, that's a real thing. I mean, that, that even might be a step-by-step um, a -step or a momentary or every once in a while, depending on who the person is, is, yeah, I'm saved, but I got life to do. Yeah, I'm saved, but you don't know how important this is to me, and he knows how important that is to me, so he's able to take a backseat. Why can't you take a backseat? See, it doesn't work that way with the Lord. He gives you life. He gives you breath. He causes your heart to beat. He sustains you. And we need to make him the focus and the center of what we are and what we do. And so the question is, how are you living your life in light of this great, the greatest gift of all? So most of us, not all of us, so those who don't, I'm sure you... There's reasons, and so I'm speaking to those of us who do celebrate Christmas with our family and our friends. You know, some, some of us are at that age where we don't have as much family or friends as we used to have. Uh, some of us are in a position where the family and friends have moved to different parts of the country, and some of us, our family and friends, are just not able to gather because of physical things. 
mean, but we generally try and celebrate uh, with family and friends and the giving of gifts of love, right? Whether it's time, whether it's talents, whether it's things that we know that um, our loved ones have looked upon and desired to have. And uh, Tanner and I were talking the other day and um, we've been blessed with uh, many tent making jobs for a night both. And so we're at a point where we can actually um, provide some things for children and grandchildren, but not too many years ago, we sat down with them. And we told them how much we love them and how much we care for them. But the only thing we could give them was our time and our love, because we didn't have anything else to give them. It's amazing how loved ones receive loved ones and it, it's not about the stuff. It, it's about the time. It's about the love. It's about the investment. And, and, and this year, we've been through so much as a family, a church family. We've been through so much as, as those out, uh, as those called in Christ in, in the midst of the world. I mean, the, the pandemic is still going on, and, and I'm not going to politicize it. I'm just going to talk about what I... What I believe is going on. It, it's still real. It's still going on. And we're not having Christmas dinner this year. Didn't have Christmas dinner last year. Hopefully we'll have Christmas dinner next year. And I mean corporately as a group. But we have been through so much. We need to be thankful. We need to just celebrate life and all that God has given us because we're here. Now I'm going to talk about my, my life a little bit. Um, as a child, I remember Christmas Day, right? You guys remember Christmas Day, and maybe some of you um, didn't uh, didn't get to open presents. I don't know everybody's situation because some of you might not have uh, gotten to open presents. But I remember being the oldest of seven on Christmas morning. Uh, the excitement of watching—I mean, you can imagine how many presents were under the tree with seven of us, right? And I was the oldest, so sometimes, you know, the little one, no, I never did that. But anyway, opening all the presents, and the excitement was is that most of us knew what those presents were. And so we were, we were excited that we were getting them because we knew what they were. And we, the reason we knew what they were is that the oldest of the seven, I won't tell you who I was, um, <laughs> managed to find where mom and dad had all the presents, you know. And uh, so we'd find all the presents, and we'd have a good time looking at them, trying to figure out whose was what. We'd make sure they all got back in their place. And then Christmas morning, it wasn't the excitement of wondering what we got. It was the excitement of finally getting it after weeks of knowing what was out there. And so, so we, had, we had a good time. I remember um, as a child, and I look back, I don't know how my mom and dad did it. I mean, he worked, he fixed cars, you know, did body and fender work for a living, but we, we got slot cars, chemistry sets, microscope, paint sets, erector sets, basketball, baseballs, car and airplane models, and all the paint we ever wanted to finish them with. And when we ran out of paint, we just knew where mom put her red fingernail polish and we used that. Oh man, that's all she wore was red. All of our cars unfinished, Ended up being red, you know. It's like, come on, mom, change it up a little bit. I remember going to my grandparents' house, um, first in LA and then in Lake Elsinore. And my grandfather, he was an architect, he was a designer and builder, so he just like he he poured everything on. So there would be a mirror, and then he would have angel hair around the mirror under the tree. Then he would have these skaters skating, and then he'd have these lights that were incredible that just did all kinds of things, and I mean, it was like going to a winter wonderland. But nobody spoke of Christ. Everybody spoke of Christmas. Nobody spoke of the greatest gift of all. They simply gave each other gifts. And there was nothing wrong with that. That was exciting. I had, I had fun. I enjoyed that. I looked back with fond memories. But in those memories, there was an absence of Jesus Christ, at least as far as I knew. I mean, perhaps there was stuff I didn't know that were that was going on other than that. 
The other thing I enjoyed about Christmas is uh, my dad collected and restored antique cars. And so like the Hollywood Lane Parade and all those big parades, he would take cars and he would uh, provide the cars for the stars. And uh, being the oldest, um, I would be able to go with him and follow him on the parade route. So, I mean, I remember one year I was crushed, Sally Field, right? I mean, as a young man, Sally Field, the flying nun, gives you, I mean, it was like, you know, right? So, and it's like, Dad, can I ride the car? No, you can walk, Billy. Dad, can I ride the car, Dad? Billy, you need to walk just like every other, just walk and don't get lost. So, so it was doing things like that. Um, my dad used to be able to um, acquire things as the body shop foreman. And when spice trucks would roll over and get totaled or decorating trucks, they would haul the, the trucks or whatever they were into the shop and they couldn't do anything with the um, contents. So they would let everybody take what they want. My mom, and my, she's still got wrapping paper from like 65 years ago. No, I'm serious. You know, the big huge rolls that are on the big thing that you pull off and you go, <laughs> she's still got that stuff. They got spices from a shilling or a brownies truck that rolled. And I, I asked her for a can and every time I'd open it, it smells like mustard gas. Like, that's real quick. <laughs> but you know what? Those are memories. On the TV show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, they uh, took a poll of eight to 12 year olds and asked them, what do you most enjoy about the holidays? They, they gave them three choices, uh, A, decorating the house, B, spending time with family and relatives, and C, receiving presents. Anybody know what the answer was, what their favorite thing to do as kids? C. B? C. Receiving presents? No. It was B, spending time with family and relatives. See, kids, although they might not show it or express it, they love to be around those who love them. They love to be around those who they never see because they get to learn, but they also get to receive from them. Oh, little Billy, you're so cute, come here. And even though you don't want to be little Billy and come here, you know, it's an act of love. So family, memories, presents, yeah, certainly what Christmas is all about, huh? Not. In approximately 75 BC, the prophet Isaiah begins his ministry in Judah. And God brought forth a prophetic truth through the prophet Isaiah. Reading out of Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with justice, judgment from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Wow. Imagine being the prophets. Could you imagine being those who were open to receive the word of God in the day and listening to these utterances? and wondering what will this look like? When will this happen? Who will this be? And we're here as benefactors of God's love for us. We think of Jesus at times, uh, and we have a 360 to fakey Jesus up here in front. Um, we, we think of him as the babe in the manger, right? We. Um, we think of him as, as this helpless child that God sent that would grow into, into our delivery. We forget that when he was born, he was our deliverer. He was our deliverer. Even the babe in the manger. God incarnate. Reading out of uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. This is how the Apostle John describes Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John chapter 1, 14 through 18, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. To be here is the recipients of the complete canon of Scripture, God's completed love letter to us. Wow. Do you wonder where God is? Seek and you shall find him. Do you wonder what God thinks? Open up his love letter to you and, and find out what he thinks. You wonder, what would you have me to do in life? It's, it's here. It's here, hiding in plain sight. Ask him and he'll show you. He'll, he'll reveal that to you. Lord, do you know how hard life is? Oh, yeah, you do. Lord, do you know what it feels like to be set upon by those who hate you? Oh, yeah, you do. See, he knows. He cares. He loves. He sustains. He provides. And whatever valley you're in, he will walk you through that. The problem isn't walking through the valley. The problem is, is that most of the time, we just want out of the valley. Just get me out of here, God. Well, no, you, you're to go through this. I don't want to go through this. Well, it's like I told one kid at school. This isn't Burger King. You don't get it your way. You know? You, you are to do what the Lord would have you to do. There are times when we might be prone to wonder, how would God act if, if he were in our place? Like an A.W. Tozer quote, he says, we know how God would act if he were in our place because he has been in our place. We know I want to read out of uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. It came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. As it was told them. I like verse 19. I think verse 19 jumps out. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Wow. How full her heart must have been, but how busy her thoughts must have been. I just gave birth to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. What is going to happen? How is this going to work? And she pondered them. And, and I believe that's the thing we do the least of as those called by the name of Christ, pondering who Jesus Christ is to us. Pondering upon uh, the things that he has set before us. Thinking, in other words, about all that lies ahead of us. I don't know about you, but I don't know when I'm going to die. I mean, perhaps you do. I don't. But I know I want to run until... I can't run no more. I want to be put in the ground with the Bible in my hand, preaching the Word of God. And I'm not saying I do that good or successfully. I'm just saying that's, that's my work and wolf in life, is to bring forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to do that until I'm dead, or I can't speak anymore. And I know that, you know what, I can pray till the end. I can't preach. And, and I believe that we need to ponder those things. So my question as we try and wrap this up, and I apologize for going a little long. Have you been given the greatest gift of all? Reading out of Ephesians 2.8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. See, you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have a great edumacation. You don't have to be at the top of, of the scores for the SATs. All you have to do is have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you can bring forth the gospel. And trust the Lord with what he's called you to bring forth. Give him the gospel, pray like big dogs, and see what God's going to do. You're not there to seal the deal. You're not there to shove the dove. You're there to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who don't know him. Read out of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. It is the gift of God, not of works, least anyone should boast. Not of works. Should good works pour out of those who have received a good God? Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior? Absolutely. But it's not works that keep your salvation. It's not works that um, cause you to attain your salvation. It's simply those things that the Lord has asked you to do that speak of his glory and his goodness, not yours. You receive the greatest gift of all, yet not done anything with it. We talked about that earlier. You've got that big, red, shiny box with the bow on it, and yeah, he's in there, I'm good. Well, what's going to happen when you die? He's in there, I'm good. Well, what are you doing with the greatest gift? Still in there, I'm good. But you're missing out on so much. Missing out on so many blessings as you go out and be his hands and feet to those who are perishing. Read out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I'm going to kind of condense the study because we are out of time. So is the gift of God's Son, Jesus Christ, the reason for your season? Is the cross of Jesus Christ the center, the axis of your life, the preeminence? 
you were purchased at a great cost. The Lord saw fit to pay a huge price for each and every one of us. You can't earn it, you can't keep it, you can't secure it, but boy, you can certainly live like you recognize what you did, right? You can, you can certainly live in that manner. Romans 6, verse 23, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 